I'm going to use my time at the improv to really sort of draw some parallels because I really feel like the things that I saw from comedians, the things that I saw from club owners actually made me go, man, there's some leadership lessons there. And so we're going to just kind of tie all those together. Okay, now we're talking. We got some cool stuff. I've got John Lennon posing in front of the improvisation. Original one in New York. That's a cool freaking picture right there. I don't care who you are. Uh, for the younger folks, John Lennon was a Beatle who sang. Here's the famous celebrities posing outside of IHOP. Nope. Here's the most famous face from our IHOP. Yeah. If you're waiting for training to fix your restaurant, you are too late. Because I will tell you, we are not near as good at fixing your restaurant as you are. You are training and coaching every single day, whether you know it or not. You set the standards by what you allow or don't allow, correct or don't correct, praise or don't praise. So whether you're having a formal training session, whether you're having just an individual training session, or you're just managing and doing your everyday activities, you are training and coaching every single day. What kind of standards do you want? From a system of individuals who work independently to a team that's poised to break through. Break through to the guests. We're an integrated team. We're starting to walk with a bit of a swagger, aren't we? You know the swagger from being the best. Some of you have it already because I was watching. I was out at a break and I saw some of you. You got that. <laughs> How you doing? Good to see you. Right? You've already got the swagger. We've got to serve differently. We've got to throw in Southern hospitality. We've got to do it in a way that's so genuine that it doesn't seem like we're consciously making a change. I like to say Southern hospitality is hard to define, but you know it when you've received it. If you want to see Southern hospitality from your employees, where does that have to start? Where? Yeah, it has to start with you. You've got to be giving Southern hospitality to your employees, to your guests. It has to start with you. When I was in charge of the uh, training restaurant for IHOP, we had a server named Steve, and Steve was, let's face it, he was a C, right? He got the job done. He'd go to the tables. He was, he was really good with the tables, but he was awful everything else. You know the kind of server, right? They never get the eyes, they never help out anybody, just kind of eh, right? Well, one day I had four trainees coming in, management trainees, and I had two trainers call out. And I said, I cannot believe I've got to do this, but I have to use Steve. And oh my God, what are we going to do? So I said, Steve, I'm going to need you to train today. I'm going to need you to be the best Steve you can possibly be. I'm going to need Steve like I've never seen Steve before. And he's like, I'm on it, dude, let's do this. He was awesome. He was doing everything he should be doing. He was around these tables, he's talking to people, he's helping. I was like, who are you? What? what? He's like, I love this stuff, man. I wish you'd let me do this all the time. I made him a trainer just because I got more productivity out of him. <laughs> you got it, dude, You're, congratulations. But he had a desire to train. We want to talk about what's a way you can activate those values in your restaurants. We need to start having those conversations. So it's a brainstorming session on how are we going to activate these values in our restaurant. And the other is he said we extract things out. So I want to show you guys how that actually happens in a company. What do you see right there? What is that? It's kind of look like a sad face, right? I drew this in a meeting when I worked at IHOP. We were in a big branding meeting. We're gonna recreate our entire brand. And I said, all right, maybe I'm crazy, but I've been seeing this since I've worked here. And so I drew that up there and I said, all right, what do you got there? And they said, it's a sad face. And I said, I know, isn't that sad? And then I showed them this on my next chart. Anybody know what that is? Yeah, it's the old IHOP logo. And I said, every time I see the IHOP logo, it makes me sad. 
And they said, well, that's interesting, John. Thanks for that input. And then four weeks later, that came out, come hungry, leave happy. Yeah. That's right. Guess how much I get every time I see the smiley face? Zero. Literally nothing. In fact, now they just taunt me with it. That's the new logo. I've got two cases of sauerkraut, two cases of scampi. A lot of us do. And I'm in a slow volume restaurant. Are we looking at ways to use that stuff in the future to get it off of our shelves? Or how would you like us to handle that? We've got a shrimp sauerkraut special coming out. Really <laughs> Sounds delicious. Delicious. You're going to love it. You're Shipped love out to it. John's house. Yeah. So you'll... It's covered in bacon jam. You're going to love it. How many of you have been to a comedy club and watched a show? Isn't there a giant difference from that middle act to that headliner? And after you're listening to the middle, you're like, it can't get any better than this. This is awesome. This guy's freaking going to be a star. And then the headliner comes out and you're like, wait, who is the other guy? Because the headliner owns the stage. I've seen his show 10 times. I could have probably seen it once and seen that show, but he makes it so fresh every time that you still laugh and you still love it. That's what the good comedians do. They can find a way to make what they do seem new. Even their, when they laugh at themselves, uh, when they mess up, that's all stuff they've done. And it happened to them once and they got a laugh and they're like, okay, I'm gonna incorporate that in my presentation. And you all do it as trainers too, right? You ever have a mess up? and it got such a great reaction, you're like, well, we're gonna put that in every class. Clearly, that's gonna happen, right? So the, le the lesson from that, always working on material is, they're always looking for ways to keep their business fresh. They're always looking for new news, things that they can do to make what they do a little bit better, right? So they're always looking to develop as well. Always working on material means they're always working on themselves, making themselves better. You're always working on your teams, making them better, right? Looking for ways to train, looking for ways to develop, looking for new things like apps, like Kendall was talking about. I mean, that's, we've seen some really cool things since we've been here. Who's pumped up for housekeeping? I think when, you're, when you think back on this conference, I think the one word that's gonna come to mind is smooth. <laughs> really smooth, huh? Are you kidding me? All right, sit down, quit milking it. I don't know how long you want to stand? I want the A-A-H-O-A -A -A people down there. There's a million of them, by the way. I want them to go, wow, how big was the Logan's thing? Did you hear them all? Well, listen, what am I gonna talk about today? I'm not gonna talk about the economy because I don't want you going back up to your room and taking a bath with a toaster. Some of you got a little depressed during the first speech. It's hard to make pancakes exciting, man. I used to go like, oh God, if I only heard, like, stuff. <laughs> I just always wanted to have this kind of power. It's just so fantastic. I want you to think about the best trainer that you've ever had. I don't care what industry, I don't care how long ago. Think about the best trainer that you've ever had. And I literally want you to get that person in your mind right now. Now I want you to think about how many years ago that was that that person made an impact on you. And then do this for me. Everybody stand up. No, seriously. Like, he's going to make us yell again. Everybody still have that trainer in their mind? Everybody still have the number of years? If that trainer was within the last year, go ahead and have a seat, please. All right, some of our training programs might be working. If that trainer was with the last, within the last five years, go ahead and have a seat. If that trainer was within the last 10 years, go ahead and have a seat. 15. 
Now take a look around the room, because I don't want to make anybody feel old by continuing to go further than that. Look how many people are up, and their trainers were over 15 years ago that they impacted their lives. Thank you, everybody. Go ahead and have a seat. The last part of this exercise, though, is now I want you to think about the trainers that you currently have in your restaurants. And how many of you think that those trainers will be remembered in a conference like this 10 years, 15 years from now for having made an impact on somebody's life? Because sometimes the stage is a littler stage. This is my daughter, Ainsley. And I learned an important leadership lesson from Ainsley. Some of you who've read my blog know this, but my daughter and my son both are part of this really um, competitive dance team. And I mean, really competitive. Like we just went to nationals in Florida and they're national champions and all that good stuff. Last year, my daughter decided, I'm not gonna try out for that. We're like, why? And she said, I wanna be an actress. I wanna go do what I wanna do. And she did. It would have been all of her best friends were on that team begging her to come back. Would have made the team. Would have been easy to take that road because, you know, you're already there. Ainsley went, no, I'm taking the road I wanna take, right? She showed me so much leadership right there. And it's the reason I do what I do now. It's the reason I'm going out and I'm speaking and I'm, I'm following my passion. She's doing what she loved to do. That little girl belted out a performance. I didn't even know she had in her, but she's passionate about it. And that's what I challenge everybody here to do. Go follow your passion. Get that leadership lesson from this little stage and go out and do what you love to do. Thank you so much.